my name is William Justice. Today, we're gonna to create a fun little tool that allows you to set up split reveal animations like this. In my last video, I talked all about expressions in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. For about the past week, I've been playing around with a few different ideas. I wanted to see if I could come up with something fun and useful using expressions in Fusion. Today I want to show you what I created. It's a split reveal animation macro. I'm going to show you how it works, what the different properties are, and how to use it, as well as how I built it. The effect is pretty easy to set up. Can you figure out how I'm using expressions? Here's a hint. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and like this video. Any questions or comments, let me know. I would love to hear from you and I'll get right back to you. To make the effect really easy to use, I've created a split reveal macro that you can download and install directly in DaVinci Resolve and plug it right into your Fusion workflow. If you want to see how it works or make adjustments or just curious what I did, you can download the Fusion settings file with all the nodes and you'll be able to see exactly how it's set up. Download links for both the macro and the Fusion node setting file are on my website, buildjustice.com, and they're in the description of this video. Okay, let's take a real quick look at how to use the split reveal macro. I'm going to add both text and an image just so you can see how it works with each of those. So uh, to add some text, we're going to drag a text node in and drag that over to the media out. And we're gonna put that in viewer two. Let's bring up two viewers here. And for our text, we're gonna type split. And we'll make it just a little bit bigger so we can see what's happening. Okay, next let's add a uh, photo from the media pool area. This could be a photo, video, really anything. And we're going to resize it by clicking the resize option here. And we'll put that in viewer one. So that sets it to our current composition size, which is 1920 by 1080. With the macro installed, there's two ways to add the, add the macro effect. You can click Effects Library, open up Tools, choose Macros, and you'll see it right here. It's called Just Split Reveal, and you can take it and drag it right into your node area, and it's in between the text and the media out. The other way to add it is we'll click uh, this resize. You can hit Control Space and type for Split Reveal or Just Split Reveal, kind of any, any part of it, and we can add it like that. So now we have the macro added to both the image and the text so we can see what it does. We have the split reveal on the image in the left and the text on the right. Um, we're going to work with the text for now to go through these. The top properties of the center, pivot, size, aspect, and angle, those are all the same things you would get with a transform node. So you can um, take, the, take the image or text and move it around, adjust the pivot, adjust size, and aspect and angle, just like you would with a transform. You can enable motion blur by checking the motion blur box. The split X and split Y, these are what you use to move left and right and up and down. We'll do that on the image as well. We can adjust the split X, moves it the X position, and Y splits it in the Y position. The split angle is the angle that the split is happening. So you can adjust it like that way. So if you, you say you could say uh, you know, want it at 90 degrees and the split X, it's gonna go out like that with the X and you could spin it around to really kind of create any kind of effect you wanted. Piece size allows you to adjust the size of the top and bottom. If you make one larger, the other one will get smaller. So you kind of have a uh, alternating effect. Same thing with the angle. If you rotate one, the other is gonna rotate in the opposite direction. So you can create an upside down text real quick by doing a rotation and then flip it back. The, the split soft edge is going to give us a little um, soft edge. There's a mask that's being used to create these two pieces. And we can adjust the soft edge and you get a, a little bit smoother edge there. You don't have that hard edge where you don't have the hard edge where it splits. For the mask offset X and Y, there's a mask across the top piece and the bottom piece. And you can shift it and move the position left and right using this. It's maybe a little bit easier to see on this image. Let's click on the image and we'll adjust the mask X and Y that and then the Y offset will allow you to increase and shrink it like that. There's another input on the macro which is this green input here and this is for a fill. Um, so when we split when we split the text or we split an image there you can put a fill image or background right in that area. To do that all we need to do is take a background and let's go ahead and set it up for a uh, say vertical gradient we'll make it red and like a blue. And you can take that and put that right into this input here. And that becomes the background for where it splits. So you can create some interesting effects this way. 
you can adjust the width of the fill so it can come in and out. There's also a soft edge on the fill if you want to kind of blur the edges of that mask right there. The last thing here is there's the, a mask piece blend. What this is, is when you move these pieces down, they go into this mask area and get hidden. You can blend that mask all the way down so that you can see both pieces. To install the split reveal macro, you just need to download the dot settings file. Um, you can download it. There's a link in the video description or you can go to my website, buildjustice.com. You need to copy the settings file to your macros directory and then restart DaVinci Resolve. You'll be able to pull it up from the effects library or when you hit control space and search for your tool. A really quick way to find your macro directory is to choose any node in Fusion, right click on it, select macro, and then choose create macro. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff here because you're not really saving anything. Hit close. And then when it says save changes, say yes. And it's gonna open up a file window and you're gonna be able to see a path right here. And this is the path where the macros directory is. Now that you know how to use the macro, let me go over the basics of how I created it, how the nodes are set up and how it works. All right, we have a blank fusion animation. Let's set up this effect. We're gonna use a text node and split that. It could be an image or anything, but we're gonna use text for this. So let's take a text, drag it into the node area, take a background, drag that into the node area. Take the output of the text and drag it onto the output of the background to merge the text on top of the background. Let's click the text and enter split. Make it a bit bigger and connect it to the media out. We have our starting point. Step one, let's create the top piece. So to mask out the top area to create the top piece, we're gonna click merge one, click mat control, click transform, click mat control, click transform. The two mat controls and the two transforms are going to be the basic nodes we use to divide up the pieces and animate them. We'll use the first mat control to create a mask across the top to create a piece for the top part of the split. Let's click the rectangle mask and drag that into the node area. So we want to mask off the top piece of the split, everything above the center and up. Let's take the output of the rectangle one mask and drag it to the garbage mat input of the mat control. Click the rectangle and choose invert. So we're masking off a piece of the split. So we want to get this part and above. To do that, let's click the rectangle. We'll set the width to 1.5. We want it to be a little bit wider than the composition so that when we animate it, the masking still takes effect. And we want the mask to be right up at the top. So let's set the Y position to one. And we have our top piece created right there. We're going to want to do a few effects on this. Let's take a transform and drag it right in between the rectangle and the mat control. The transform is going to be used to adjust the angle of the mask. Let's take the output of the transform and drag it into the garbage mat input of mat control two. The mat control two is used to do the show and reveal of the piece. We can click on the transform. If we move it down, you'll see that the split text is being hidden by the same mask. The last transform is going to be used to adjust the size of the piece as well as the angle. Let's click the background and pull the alpha all the way down so that we just see our text. Step two, we're going to create the bottom piece and merge them together. Creating the second piece is easy. Let's highlight all of these nodes, hit control C to copy them. We'll move the node area up just a bit, hit control V. We haven't pasted in there. We'll move the transform down and the rectangle. Take all of these nodes and shift them right up into there. We'll move the background and the merge and the text over just a bit. Let's disconnect the transform two from the media out. And we're going to take this transform and merge it right on top of the second piece on the bottom and connect that up to media out. Let's take merge one and put it into the input of the mat control on the bottom piece. The mask for the bottom piece is the same as the top piece because we've copied it. So we just need to move it. We'll click on the, rec the bottom rectangle and set the center Y to zero. That moves the mask to the bottom. We get to see the bottom piece of our text. Now we have everything set up and ready to animate. To show you a few examples, we can click the transform and move the size and position. Step three, we're gonna add a few expressions and it's gonna be ready to go. We have both pieces set up, so let's add some expressions. We're gonna start with the transform in, right in the middle. This is the transform that moves the X and Y for each of the pieces. Let's click the transform on the bottom piece and we want to set up an expression on this so that it moves in the opposite direction of the top piece. Right click on center and choose expression. Currently the center position is set to 0.5 and 0.5, which is the center of the screen. Let's add the following expression. 
it's one minus transform one center X and one minus transform one center Y. This expression inverts the position. Let's take the center position and move it to the left on the top one and it goes to the right on the bottom. Same thing with the up and down. Let's set up opposite movements on the top mask and the bottom mask down here. Let's click on the bottom rectangle mask. For the center position, right click, choose expression, and we're gonna paste in a very similar expression. We'll click on the top mask. When we move the top mask to the left, the bottom mask is actually moving to the right. So we can do a left-right reveal, or we can adjust the Y position and do a top-bottom reveal. I want to show you one real quick thing about this second mat control. Um, when we take the transform, let's reset the position here. You'll notice when we adjust the Y position, it disappears, and that's because it's being masked out by this mat control node. We can disable that if you want to see both of the pieces. They're not going to be masked out. Um, you might want to use this if you want to see both pieces on the screen at the same time. We can put the mask back on by enabling the by re-enabling the mat controls. We'll reset the center position, and now when we adjust the Y position, they disappear into each other. Let's split the text vertically by adjusting the Y position on this transform. Click on Transform 2. We're going to use Transform 2 to adjust the size of the top piece and bottom piece, as well as the angle. And we're going to do the same thing and have them go in the opposite. So when one side is getting bigger, the other side is going to get smaller. Let's start with the angle. We're going to click the bottom transform down here right click on angle and choose expression. We're going to enter transform to dot angle. When we adjust the angle, they're going to be the same. So the top and the bottom angle are going to match by the expression we just set up. So let's click transform two. I like it when they spin in the opposite direction. So let's say transform two dot angle times minus one. And now as we spin the angle on the top one, the bottom piece is going to spin in the opposite direction. It creates an interesting effect. Let's do the same thing with size. The bottom transform, Right click on size, choose expression. We're going to enter 2 minus transform 2 dot size. When we click on transform 2 and adjust the size, the bottom piece will go in the opposite direction. Then to just add a little bit more control after this merge node, add a transform node and you can adjust the angle of the entire animation as well as the size and position. Let's adjust the split angle. We'll click transform 3 and you'll see when we change this angle, the split angle changes right here. So all we need to do is right click on the angle, select publish, then click the transform on the bottom, right click on the angle of that, connect to transform three angle. And now the split angle is connected for both of the masks. That's the basic setup. The macro helps out a lot because you don't have to click each of the different nodes to adjust properties. It's all in one place. You click the split reveal node and you can adjust positions, size, sizes, angles, and really whatever you want. It's a little more difficult here because you have to click each of the elements to do your adjustments. I want to quickly show you a few things about how I set up the nodes for the macro. It's a little bit different than the example that I just went through. After downloading the settings file, you can drag it into the fusion node area to see the animation. We'll click off of it, click media out and hit two so that we can see what we have set up. When I set up the macro, I renamed a few of these nodes to make them a little bit easier to know what's going on. Um, for the input, we have a text coming in. This could be an image, and it's going into a pipe router, and we're using that to split it to the Mac Control 1 and Mac Control 2. This sample also, um, I've included a background so that when you split the nodes, you're going to get a color or an image or whatever you input into the background in between the split area. Let's click the transform, and you'll see that it, um, it is uh, split X and split Y. I added some user parameters for that. Let's click on this user tab right here, and you'll see split X and split Y. So this uses the sliders to adjust. I think just think it's a little bit easier. And here you can see that this is the this orange part here is the background. It's going into here, so we can change what that change that up. Um, both the transform, the transform and the rectangle, I added the user properties to. Thanks for watching. Just let me know if you have any comments or questions, and I'll get right back to you. The download links for both the macro and the node settings are in the video description and on my website, buildjustice.com. There's also some notes for where to copy the settings files so that you can use them inside of Fusion easily. Did you like the video? If you did, please subscribe. I really, really appreciate your support.